Hello. Today we will be solving this problem called Sabaray Sams 2. It is similar to the previous problem Sabaray Sams 1. So I invite you to watch that video before watching this one. So we are given an array of in n integers and our task is to count the number of subarrays having some x. This is the exact same uh, statement as the previous problem. The only difference is that here x and ai can be negative. And this will prevent us from using that sliding window technique we saw. So we would need to come up with a different approach. So let's copy our example. In this case, uh, the answer is two, and it can it is two because the sum of this interval is seven, and the sum of the whole array is also seven, and. To reiterate what we did in the previous problem, we we saw uh, an approach in O of n cubed, and this relied on going through all subarrays and calculating the sum of each subarray in O of n. And we also saw an approach in O of n squared, and this consisted in using a prefix sum to speed up uh, the process of calculating the sum of a subarray so basically n squared is required to go through all subarrays and calculating the sum of a subarray was done in all of one using prefix sums after some pre-processing and finally the approach we opted with uh, the approach we opted for was uh, done in all of n using sliding window but as you recall the idea behind sliding window is having two pointers like i and j and we kept moving i as long as the the sum we accumulated was less than seven less than x and once it became larger than or equal to x we stopped because we say we said that there is no point in moving our right boundary beyond that point because the value would only get larger so the sum of that subarray would be larger than our target x so there was no point in moving our right boundary beyond that point at that point we kept moving our left boundary to reduce the sum of the subarray below x and we repeated that process however that logic would not apply here because the next value after i might be negative and it would reduce the sum of of our subarray uh, for example if the subarray had a sum of 8 so far with the previous logic we would say that we would just have to stop and increment j because this sum is beyond is uh, larger than 7 but now the next value might be negative 1 and if we incremented i while keeping j fixed the total sum would be 8 minus 1 which is 7 and which would give us uh, a correct value uh, that would increment uh, our count that's why the logic of uh, sliding window would not, would not apply here then what can we do so let's revisit the the idea behind prefix sum Let's try to calculate the prefix sum of this array. As we said, for convenience, we always start with a dummy uh, variable zero or a dummy value zero. The, this makes calculations easier because as we said, in order to calculate the sum of some uh, subarray, we would just, cal we would just uh, have a subtraction, like if we wanted 
the sum of the interval ij it would be equal to pref of j minus pref of i minus 1 so if our interval that we wanted to calculate the sum for was like 0 5 this value pref of 0 minus 1 would be out of bound and that's an issue that's why we always add this dummy very value 0 to avoid this problem okay so now let's just uh, go ahead and calculate our perfect sum so we would start with 0 then 2 then we said the next value would be just this value plus the previous one so minus 1 plus 2 is 1 then 3 plus 1 is 4 then 4 plus 5 is 9 and finally minus 2 plus 9 is 7 great and now we said that the, the correct intervals like the one that contribute to the answer were this one and this one and it makes sense from this prefix sum we would obtain 7 if we took this value and subtracted this value from it so 9 minus 2 is actually 7 so it's like taking this value minus the previous value to this interval which was this so 9 minus 2 would give us 7 and if we took this value which is 7 minus the previous value to the whole interval which is 0 it would actually give us 7 as well so that's that's the idea so how could we leverage this to solve the problem we could uh, create this prefix array but like if we are at this position how would we know that there was a 2 before we already saw this idea when we needed to know if uh, we saw a value before or not and we could do that using a set for example and this would allow us to know whether or not we saw a value a log of n so that's pretty convenient we could just create this array and we could do this in O of n and we could, we could just like go through each value if we are at this position we would ask ourselves okay the sum so far is 9 and we want the sum to be a 7 so it's like we want this to be 7 and we know that this is a 9 so what value should this be it's clearly should be a 2 which is 9 minus 7 so we would just ask ourselves did we see a, a 2 before but unfortunately the set only holds one value like one copy of each value here we could for example have seen another 2 here and this interval would be an answer and also this interval would also be an answer so we don't need to know it is not enough to know whether or not we saw a value or not we are also interested in the number of times we saw that value so that's precisely why we need to use a map instead a map of like long long and int and we would use long long because the sum might get larger than uh, the max of int so how would we proceed in doing so let me copy our example once again so we said that the example was uh, this so 2 minus 1 3 5 and the minus 2 we would compute the prefix sum so it would be 2 1 4 9 and 7 and we would just go through our array so we are at this position let me create an area here that would represent our map so we are at this position our target sum is 7 and our sum is 0 so this is 0 
and we need 7 so what should this pref be it should be minus 7 but our map is empty so it's clearly not possible so all what we have to do is to add the 0 to our map so we would add 0 and it we saw it once great next we move on to this value so the sum so far is 2 it's like we have a 2 here and our target is 7 so what does this need to be it needs to be a minus 5 have we seen a minus 5 so far no so we can't increment our counter but what we can do is add 2 to our map so we saw 2 once then we move on to this position the sum so far of this whole interval is 1 it's like this is 1 and our target is 7 so this needs to be minus 6 have we seen a minus 6 so far? no so all what we would do is uh, state that we saw 1 and we just say that we saw 1 once now we are at this position so this is 4 and uh, this needs to be negative 3 have we seen a negative 3 so far no so we wouldn't increment our answer but we would add 4 to our map so we saw 4 once now we are at this position so we are, are the, the sum is 9 and in our, so this needs to be 2 that way 9 minus 2 would give us 7 and have we seen 2 so far and the answer is yes and how many times have we seen it one time so this is the count of answer so we have to increment it by 1 because if we take this interval we would get 9 minus 2 which is 7 which is precisely this interval so that's why we increment our answer by 9 and we just state that we saw 9 once because maybe this 9 would uh, would be used with some other value for example 50, uh, 16 yeah like if there was some other 16 here uh, we, and we got to the point where this was 16 we would ask ourselves what does this need to be to, to get a result of 7 and the answer is 9 because 16 minus 9 would give us 7 so we need to add it to our map and move on now we are at this position so this is 7 what does this need to be it needs to be a 0 and it's that's why it's very important to add this 0 at the beginning to represent the whole array and then have we seen a 0 before and the answer is yes and how many times have we seen it and the answer is 1 so we increment our count by 1 okay let's let's uh, increase our um, our example let's add some other values for example let's add negative 5 here and let's add 7 again so this would give us in the prefix sum this would be 7 plus negative 5 which is 2 and 2 plus 7 is 9 so now we are at this position the sum is 2 and we would need a negative 7 have we seen a negative 7 so far and the answer is no so we wouldn't increment our count but we would increment the number of times we saw 2 so this becomes 2 uh, also I forget I forgot to add 7 to the map so we need to add 7 with frequency 1 now we are at this position so the, this is 9 and as we saw this would require this would need to be 2 have we seen 2 so far and the answer is yes and how many times have we seen it 2 times that's why we need to add 2 here so the answer would be 4 and we could see just from here like this would be uh, a possible answer like 
our intervals start from here and stop right here like seven by itself and also you would take it from here all the way to here so this whole interval will also be an answer and if we add it up so we have negative one plus three is two plus five is seven minus two is five minus five is zero plus seven is seven so indeed that's also an answer so that's pretty much it with a map and the prefix sum we will just solve this problem and the complexity in this case is uh, all like what what do we do after we just loop through this array like in all of n and each time we ask ourselves have we seen that value so we look up a value in a map and this takes log n as with the set although the constant factors of maps are larger but that's a subject from some other day and we look up a value and we just update a value so that's also takes log of n so in total uh, the total complexity would be l log n and it, this is uh, this is uh, this is a good enough complexity for our constraints so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and check out the code so we we'll start by reading n and x then we will declare a vector of ints that will store our values then we will read them then I will declare this variable sum this will represent uh, like the last value I calculated of the prefix sum so this would prevent me from calculating the whole prefix sum I am only interested in the last value this is our, my map I call it scene and it maps long long to int because um, uh, the sum can be larger than the max of int so this needs to be long long and the number of times I've seen this value can be at most 2 times 10 to the 5th like uh, this would happen if for example the whole array only contains zeros and as we said here it is very important to declare this uh, value of 0 that's why I add it to my map that's the first thing I do so I, I increment the number of times I've seen 0 then this is my answer and it has to be long long because for example if the whole array was like if i had 10 to the fifth and my target was zero and the whole array contained zeros then any sub array would be an answer and how many sub arrays do i have uh, it is precisely n choose two which is equal to n times n minus one over two and since n can be as large as 10 to the fifth this would be of order 10 to the 10 something like that so it is larger than max int so that's why i need to declare my answer as long long then i will loop through all the values and for each value i will just add values to some uh, and some will actually represent this value like the value i'm interested in so if I am at this position, uh, I would just add some at this point would be 4. I would add 5 to it to obtain this 9 I am interested in. Then I will uh, add to my answer the number of times I've seen sum minus x. Because that's what we did. We said that this was x and this is sum. And I need to know how many times I saw this and if i bring this to the other side and bring x to this side i would get uh, this would be equal to sum minus x and i also have to increment the number of times uh, i saw this sum so far and finally i will just print the answer so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and submit So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.